Welcome to the Jalan Besar Stadium and you're watching Channel 5's live coverage of the 2009 Great Eastern Yost S-League. Can a Geelang United side who are managed by three coaches beat a Tampines Rover side that's handled by one man? Let's find out. From your match commentators, they are Des Conquil and Jose Raymond. Thanks very much, Raj. Yes, it's East versus East. It's the Blues of Tampanese versus the Greens of Geylang United. And Geylang United, well, they've got Latiak and Belichak to uh, go up against Mustafik in the centre of midfield. But look out, of course, for Noor Ali will rush through the teams. As, they, as you can see, the teams are waiting to get on with the contest. This is how Geylang, we reckon, will line up. Belichak, the defensive midfielder. They'll play three at the back. Seto, Bayhaki and Kamaru Lafin. Ashwin Shari for Noor Ali sharing the striking responsibilities onto Tampanese Tampanese Rovers and there's a little bit of a shock in that they have left out their French defender Benoit Croissant but they also are look like they're going to go with a 3-4-3 Alif, Noor Alam Shah and Chu Lee all very attacking players that means Mustafik and Nakamura will anchor the midfield Sutti and Ridwan providing the width and look at those strike force, Chuli, No Alam Shaw and Alif. That's the Tampanese Rover side. We are all ready for kickoff at Jalambasar. It is Geylang in the green versus Tampanese in the blue. Jose Raymond alongside me in the commentary box. Jose, both want to win this, both need to win it. I think Tampanese Rovers have come off a great victory against St. Kapongo. I think they're going to get out here and try to get the three points and put themselves up in the table standings. East versus East, it really is a battle of the heartlands it's the kind of match that really can get people wound up which is one of the criticisms of singapore football with all due to respect to saf and home united it's difficult to um empathize with them but Geylang and Tampanese are two definite neighborhoods well definitely this match actually has got a fantastic history last year I think right at this venue there was a fantastic a crack of a game it ended up 3-2 in Tampanese's favor a beautiful free kick by Suti we actually won that game well this time around let's see what happens Ashwin Sharif pulled down by Mustafik Faroudin who's just back from a suspension and Ashwin he's been a terrific signing from the Singapore Armed Forces three goals already for the former international Belichak into Ashwin and he's got a confidence and a swagger about him as the Geylang number 18 as Faisal Senin looks down the line and gets the return does Faisal and he's got to the byline and it's cleared by Nakamura only as far as Latiak Ricky Harris lovely give and go with Faisal Senin and as Tampanis clear their lines that was good football it was a great play there but Geylang getting all over the place They've Trading one touch passes and trying to find a way through Tampanese. Alex Shafayin into Ridwan, the speed merchant. He's looking for support up there. Two Lees in the penalty area. No, Alam Shah comes short. Alif is just caught offside, timed his run. Not quite right. But what a terrific start, Jose. Fantastic start to the game. Great pace. And of course, on this, in this, on the pitch, you have so many ball winners, match winners, Ashwin Sharif. From Geylang, you have No Ali, Ricky Harris, a man who's not really been known much about, but a lot have been said about him. No Alam Shah, Singapore striker, Ali Shafain, Chuli, so many match winners. Akihiro Nakamura, he's going to be one hell of a cracker game. Zulkanem wins the header. No Ali. Yasir Hanapi, who certainly doesn't look out of place at the S League level. Come through the ranks of Geylang, has Yasir. Already scored once this season and he's foraging forward. Latiak and Alif. Chuli, big and strong. Face though by Kamrul Arafin, who's coming on the right hand side of this back three for Geylang. And both sides, as we predicted, are operating with a back three, which 
Gives it a very attacking line up on, on both ends of the pitch. Well, I think that's the reason why the game has started the way it has. Both teams trying to get at each other. Alex Cross a little bit too close to Yazid. You can see what the intention was. No, Alam Shah was lurking just six yards out. And Yazid, who isn't the biggest keeper. Harris bottles out. Latiak. Basil sent him into Seto. Ricky Harris. Good ball control, but then runs into a Kehiro Nakamura. And somehow keeps it. And Latiak. Yasir. No rally. Prompting from midfield into Yasir Hanapi. And Yasir goes down under the challenge. Nothing doing, says referee Mohamed Taki. Wow, I hope it carries on like this. Great start to the game, like you said. Uh, both teams wanting to get the three points at stake. And both starting in cracking pace. There was talk a couple of weeks ago, especially when Noel Amsha walked off the match. Um, after he was not allowed to take the penalty, that there was something wrong with his Tampini side. And Warawan, I think, the coach came up in public to say that you know, if he doesn't win in a couple of games, he'll have to step down. But Warawan actually right now is the S League's most coach who's got stayed on in one cup for the longest so far. Quite interesting that he made those comments. Kaneko into Sharif goes long to Mo Alam Shah and Suti. Score of three S League goals so far this year. Quickly closed down by Noor Ali. And Yasir onto Belichak. Noor Ali drifts away from Nakamura. Belichak has got Faisal Senin over on this left hand side, and Faisal picks it up. Miscontrols it. That's frustrating. Both of these teams, of course, have had terrific histories. Geylang were the team in the late 90s. And Tampanis took over the mantle for two or three years, around about 2004, 2005. And since then, Singapore Armed Forces, of course, have become the team to beat. But there's potential and there's football steeped in both of these sides. I think you look at the Tampanese Rowers side, there are so many stars and national players. Mustafi Farid, Noor Alam Shah, Sharif, Alapiche, and, and so many of them have, they've got the quality and they should be able to just, as long as they start getting the season in, a couple of wins down their belt, they should be able to be confident enough. Mustafik, back from suspension, sent off at the tail end of a two-all draw with Woodlands. Lovely ball into Alif, faced by Bahaki Kaizom, and Bahaki does well. Composed defending from the international defender. Yasir. Ricky Harris. Who's given the ball away. He was rescued by Kamra Lafin. Switch of play by Latiak. And Noor Ali has got Ashwin Sharif in the penalty area. An important block by Zulkanem. I think it was an important block by Zulkan. It was no Ali actually has got a tendency to whip in those really wicked crosses and he almost managed to get it in there. As you can see, Coach Warawan not exactly pleased at the way the game has started. He looks surprisingly tense, doesn't he? Talking to him before the game as well. There's a, a little bit of self-imposed pressure on the tie. I think that the three draws in the first three games was really unexpected and they find themselves in un unknown territory. Not exactly the place where Champions Rose find themselves in usually. Cleared by Zulkanen, and this time he allows Hassan Sunny, who learnt his footballing trade at Gay Lang, did Hassan. Then he moved on to the Young Lions and now at Tampanese. The current Singapore number one. Terrific goalkeeper, fabulous athlete. It's a good battle between Hassan and Lionel Lewis for number one now. I think based on 
the last couple of matches, international standards, um, Hassan has been doing well. And the two of them really have got almost equal standards. It all depends on form. And this current form, Hassan has been doing well. But that does not mean Lionel Lewis will not have a chance to be the number one keeper again. Ashwin Sharif is brought to the ground unceremoniously. And Noor Ali is being given the space of Jalan Basar. Sutty closed down quickly by Noor Ali, who's rather enjoying himself out there, I think. I think Noor Ali is just a couple of goals short of um, meeting his magical 100. And he has told me that this year will be the year that he has to cross that mark. Time is not on his side. His cage is catching up with him. And it's probably his last couple of seasons in the S League. Sutty looking for Noor Alam Shah. Ridwan chases it, but even Ridwan's pace can't catch that one. Ricky Harris. Faisal sent him into Ashrin. A little clash. Harris caught the, the back of Sharif Samat there. But Ashwin Sharif is another who the move seems to have done him a power of good. He's looking strong and fit and alert. Well, I think one of the reasons why he was a little bit pudgy last season and the last two seasons in SAFFC and, well, as he probably got hit by the commentator's piss for a bit. But he does look like he's enjoying his football tree. Also, his name so far this season, playing in the first 11, I think that's helped him a lot. Shaw goes in. Look to be fair, as though he won the ball fair and square. Amataki has a quiet word, and Noalam Shaw bites his tongue. He's always worth keeping an eye on, is Mr. Alam Shaw. Well, I think the ball was there for the taking, and Alam Shaw doing what he always does best, fighting for every single ball, every single edge of the field, and he was just trying to win that. Ashwin. Latiak. Lovely ball from Latiak down the line. Faisal Senin, though, has got the strength. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Ridwan's a little bit fortunate there. Well, I think Faisal actually may have won that pretty decently and uh, quite fairly, but, well, you know, on the ground, I was not able to see what exactly Mohamed Taki, the referee, who is impeachment for? This time the, the foul goes the other way. And after a, a very bright opening five minutes, it's gone a little bit wayward for the next five. But the intent of both is clear. They are both getting bodies forward. They're playing with two up front and getting one up in support and both fullbacks marauding down the respective flanks. And Noor Ali is rather loving the freedom he's getting. Is Belichak. Ashrin Sharif. Into Ricky Harris. Sharif does well. Composed play by the youngster. Although he's not a youngster anymore, is he? Well, it's a alert play by Sharif Samad and uh, did well to actually stop Ricky Harris from trying to take it take take through into and have a shot at goal. And he's well, not young anymore. He's five years old. This has got to be a breakthrough season for him. And there's plenty of pressure. We spoke about the fact that. Varouane has left out Benoit Croissant, one of his foreign signings. So that puts just a little bit of extra pressure on him. And he gets the header in, and it finds goalkeeper Hassan Sunny. And Tampanis, they're not sure whether they want to play three at the back or four at the back this season. They've switched and chopped and changed, which is very unlike them. Well, they usually play three at the back because that's the that's the kind of football coach Warawan knows. Um, he likes enjoying, he enjoys attacking on along the flanks, and uh, this, which is why he's got players like Suti and uh, Ridwan. Well, it's kind of strange that he's probably undecided on whether to play a four-four-two or a four-three-two, four-four-two this season or three-four-three. Three. And well, like you said, it's kind of strange. Sharif Samat, Zulkarnam. Seems to have been around forever. Mustafik. Zul onto City. 
Thai international was looking for Alif Shafayin. Bahaki Kaizon just steps in and Ashrin needed to take a touch. And Zul can just mop up once again. It's quite amazing considering that Zul Kanan Zaino has been around, he's playing the league since 1996 and he's only 36 years old. It's quite amazing he's still going strong and still looks as fit as he was. Well, maybe a little bit slower than 996 when he used to be a fantastic winger. But he's playing at the back and probably when you play in defence. But with the league getting a little bit more competitive and players getting faster and faster, you know, you never know how long one can last. Julian Janor Alam Shah and Latiak had to make sure there was enough purchase on that header. There was. And Yassi Diazin. Gombak United stand proudly at the top of the Great Eastern Yo's S League. Five games into the season. And it means that the Heartlands clubs are taking an awful lot of encouragement from that. Well, I think Gomba United have always been a club which every team is kind of afraid to play against. They have got good players. They've got players who run all around the pitch. And I think Darren Stewart has done a great job that he's taking over. Tampanis and Geylang, they're wanting to join them near the top. It's getting to be a competitive league now with DPMM having made a good start as well. Sato's in hard on Noor Alam Shah there. And Sutti finds Mustafik. Noticeable that Mustafik Faroudin is being shadowed by Latiak. He has to go that deep to get a little bit of space. Alif, Ridwan, Alif, lovely give and go. Ridwan, Chuli's in the middle. So is Noel Alam Shah. Ridwan, Ridwan, oh, what terrific football. One touch, one twos right the way down the line. All that was missing was the final ball into Chuli. Well, you can see that smile on, on a Ridwan Mohammed's face. They were enjoying this, the one touch football between him and Noel Alam Shah and Alif Shafai and Elwell. Chuli just attached slow to that. It was brilliant, brilliant football by Tempanis. A fair description, simple but absolutely devastatingly brilliant. Three one-twos in that move. And Kamrul Afin was the man who had to make the interception. And that goes a long, long way. And then across the goal for Yazid. And the long throw when it came in from Kaneko. Well, Yazid really has got to come and collect those. It nearly bounced on his goal line. Well, if you thought Tampani Shores were just taking, taking it easy and lying back, well, that's, that's the kind of football they can play if they want to, and was just brilliant. So two let-offs for Yazid Yassin and Geylang United. Zulkanem. Mm. I've only ever seen him as a defender, but I've heard great things about him when he was a winger as well. He was a great winger when he was playing for Geelong in 996, and he was also part of the national team in 995 at the SEA Games. Latiak can strike him. It wasn't too far over, always rising, and Hassan Sunny looked in control, but Miroslav Latiak has been a good foreign signing for Geelong United. This is second season with the club. And a healthy crowd. These are both teams you'd like to see up near the top of the table because you know, a bit like Woodlands and a bit like Seng Kang, that the crowds will follow if they do well. Both teams have got good history and character. Ridwan. No Alam Shah, Mustafik. Nakamura. Just eases it over to Chu Lee and Chu Lee is beaten by Yasir Hanapi, and then gives it back. That was a bit careless. Sutti, Ridwan, can't get the header in. Faisal sent him, attacked it. Now Belichak has got players left and right. And the flag is up, Ricky Harris just went too quickly. And it's a correct decision by the assistant referee, R. Ravichandran. Little mop of the brow. First involvement well done, and at the other end, 
Yazid this time comes for the ball and gets a good firm fist to Sutty's cross. Ricky Harris, oh, he so nearly got away from Kaneko. And Norali. He may have calmed down, but you know it won't be long before Norali gets involved in some kind of trouble somewhere. Well, I think he's probably just getting frustrated that over the last couple of minutes, Tampines Rose have begun to stamp their authority on the match and are pushing really forward and trying to find ways into the Geelong box. The triumvirate, the famous triumvirate of the Geelang bench, that's Lim Tong Hai. He was a very quite, calm defender. It's quite interesting because he still looks the same as he was 20 years ago. I wonder what's his secret. Sutty has got five blue shirts to aim for. All he does though is find Latiak, thumping header from Miroslav Latiak. And Nakamura tidies up for Tampanese in the blue. Big jump by Kaneko. And tiny little Alif finds Chuli. Kaneko makes his move, but Ridwan is available. And Ridwan can go near post for no Alam shot. Shields it well. Fancy. Chuli blocked by Latiak. And a good ball. Ricky Harris, too fancy. No, Alam Shah works hard. Good game of football here at Jalambasar. Chuli. Mustafik. Chuli. That's easily picked up by Seto. Ashwin Sharif. Norali. Nyase Hanapi. Frustration from Tong Hai on the bench. What he was after was he was trying to get a little bit more width down this left hand side. That's a strong challenge coming in from Mustafik Farudin and the man just back for suspension receives a yellow card. And to be fair, that is no more than a mistimed tackle. But Latiak is hurt. Well, we all know that Mustafik Farudin is a kind of player who just is a hard tackler. And well, I don't think there was any ill intent in there. It was just a little slow in it, but probably didn't go on a yellow card it's probably his first offense of the day and uh, it's good to see that lad is all right Mustafik Farudin anchor of the Singapore midfield he's always very proud to talk about his citizenship he's one of those who's benefited from the foreign talent scheme no rally Ashrin Sharif. Poor first touch from Ashrin and Nakamura sweeps it out to Chuli. And Chuli. Oh, no, Alan Short changed his feet beautifully, then just didn't strike it hard enough. Well, just unlucky for Noel Amshah. He was. He knew what he was trying to do. It was coming in, it was a great cross and eluded everyone. Great cross by Chuli, eluded everyone. And Alam Shah, well, he was caught in, well, he knew what exactly was doing, but unfortunately didn't really strike it and didn't have a good connection on that. And Yazid comes up trumps once again. Second look. Nakamura, Chuli, Nakamura. And Yasir Hanapi this time. Defensive role. Well, the chances are going Tampanese way midway through this first half. But it remains goalless. And Chu Li is foraging down the left. Nakamura! Another opening goes a begging for Tampanese Rovers. Kaneko. 
And the Kaneko wins a corner off Ricky Harris. Uh, this is the effort from Nakamura. Well, I think Nakamura had a swipe at that and he tried to use the outside of his foot to try and wing it into the back of Yasin Yasin's goal, but unfortunately it just went wayward and really went all the way, almost went all, it did go all the way out for a throw. Kaneko and Mustafik. And Nakamura and Noor Alam Shah all in the penalty area. Chuli joins them. Alif Shafayim goes short. The little fella causes the problem. Sutti into Ridwan Mohammed. Ridwan, lovely ball. Important defensive header from Kamarul Lafin. And the flag goes up against Alif Shafayim. Well, with all the big guys up, they certainly took Gaylang by surprise, taking a short corner. Well, it was a good clearance there by Kamara Alfin. It was timely, and without him, without him there, I'm sure Mustafik Faroudin, even Alam Shah, or even Chuli, either one of them could have actually gotten their head to it. Towering header from Keneko. And then picks up the pieces. Alif. Every shirt he wears seems too big for him. Sutti. Zul into Alif. Mustafik. Oh, cool play. That's your centre back. And winning the throw-in as well has, I think he got a little bit excited having got round Ashwin Sharif. He tried the 50-yard pass. Sutti. No rally in attendance. Chu Lee. Nakamura. Alif Shafayin. Nakamura pulls it back. No Alan Shaw. It's another terrific defensive block. This time from Seto. And the chances are piling up for Tampanese. Well, Noel Amshan knew exactly what he was doing and, well, Seto, it's a great cross there by Nakamura and he eluded everyone, including Yazid's height, did not help him at all and Seto, what an important interception there by the Japanese to deny Alam Shah and Tampanese. Again, it's lovely one-touch football from Tampanese. And Geylang hanging on by the skin of their teeth at the moment. There's a little stoppage because Sharif Samat uh, took a knot from Ashwin Sharif and went down heavily. But the signs for Tampanese, Jose, are very good. Well, he does not look too happy still, but he still got that worried look on his face. I wonder why he would be really worried. But when Tampanese was exactly, they're beginning to turn the screws on Geelong and they have had the better chances in the last 10 minutes or so. There's a re-air of this match on Saturday morning on Channel 5. Double chance to, to see it. Of course, sleague.com will be providing full match coverage, official match coverage. And there's plenty of blogs knocking up as well around about Singapore football. There's a lot of chatter on the internet. And there's some pretty good stuff. I like the Senkang one at the moment. I'm an avid reader of that one. It's also good to see Singapore being represented on the AFC Champions League by SAFFC <laughs> and of course by Home United in the AFC Cup. It helps that Singapore's on the continental map by these two clubs. Back with the action. Achal Ambassar remains goalless. But you suspect there will be goals in this game. City. Another healthy crowd for Friday night fair. And the crowds generally are up this year. Big one. Chuli. It's turned away from Sato brilliantly. Chuli into Mustafik. 
Alif tries to go in and it's feet up against Tani Alif Shafain. What is he, five foot one? <laughs> but there or thereabouts. He actually started playing football. He represented Singapore in the under 12 tournament in 1995 in Singapore. Alif Shafain and back then he was the smallest size player in the, on the field and it's quite amazing how far he's coming. Well, it's not really changed that much. He's a terrific player though. You can never rest and so is that man. Zul. Ali finds Mustafa Faroudin. No Alam Shah. Turns into trouble. But Belichak. The flag is up. Again, Ricky Harris just didn't time it right, or rather you should say, the defence of Sharif Samat did. They just stepped up in unison. And Samat, the least experienced, is the, the anchorman in that back three. Yazid, you could see the intention was to find Noor Alam Shah on the far post and to test Yazid Yassin in the air. Ricky Harris. Sharif gets away with a, a miscontrol. Midline goes long, but Haki lets it bounce. Always dangerous when a centre-back lets the ball bounce. This time he's got away with it. Alif into Nakamura, and Sutti. Nakamura's outside of him. And Sutti uses him brilliantly. Nakamura, the Haki Kai's on header. Ridwan loses out to Latiak. Mustafik Farudin, deflection into the midriff of Yazid. And Kaneko, and surely Gaylan can't hold out much longer, Jose. Well, Tampines Rovers are surely trying to step it up a bit, and like I said, this was another great work there, but Ridwan! As we were watching the replay, Ridwan Mohamed got free and has fired just over the top as the chances continue to come thick and fast. Well, surely it's just a matter of time before we see goals in this game. And the chances are all have been falling to Tampines Row as well. Great work there by Tampines Row. As, as you can see, number of shots by Tampines Row was four, and by Gaylan still zero. But those four have all been quality chances. They haven't been shots from distance or anything. But it remains goalless. Jose Raymond providing the expert words in the commentary box. Jose, who's been around the Singapore sports scene for 12, 15 years now, Jose, watching the great games and the not so great. Well, it just keep getting better by the year. Signs of activity on the bench at Geylang. And it might be tactical, because this three at the back is being exposed far too easily. Chu Lee into space. And Chu Lee! Another important challenge. Belichak finds Noor Ali. And Noor Ali concedes the throw into Ridwan. It's quite interesting that we saw Shahiru warming up earlier in as you said, there was some activity on the Geelong bench. But Shahiro is actually a midfielder. And could it be that Ling Tong Hai? Suti! Well, we know that Tai has got an explosive left foot. He just couldn't keep it down. And this is a change. Now, is it enforced or is it tactical? It's Yasser Hanapi who started well. 
He's coming off. Shah Hero, it is coming on. Well, it's probably more tactical. I think the coach Lim Tong Hai probably believes that it's in the midfield where they're losing, and he probably wants to put in Shah Hero now a little bit more experienced than Yasser, even though they're both youngsters, so that Gaylan can try to get a grip on the midfield. That's where they're losing now in the last 15 minutes or so, and which is why Tampines always have been pushing a lot of players forward and trying to find and finding their way back into the back four very easily. We'll keep a close eye on where Shah Hirol does play. He started in the centre midfield where Belichak was. It's not made much difference though because Ridwan was caused a, a good challenge coming from Faisal Senin. And for Gay Lang, it is just trying to stem the tide, I think. I think it would be really lucky for them to get through this first 45 minutes without conceding a goal. The way temperature rules have been pushing forward over the last couple of minutes, and the chances they've had, well, you do see Gay Lang cracking up at one point or another. That's the goalkeeper who's been under most pressure, Yazid Yassin. And it'll be a long throw again coming in from Kaneko. Latiak clears. Haki, only half clears. Jumping for the ball was Mustafik. Again, he's not too impressed with the decision of Mohamed Taki. Got to be careful, he's on a yellow card. Anything in this, Jose? Well, not much in it. And, uh... But I think he was... He did not even use his arms to climb on the player, so... I'm not sure why that's a free kick, but well, Mohamed Taki, the referee, men in the middle must have his reasons. Harris wins the header ahead of Kaneko, but Ashwin Sharif, who started very brightly, wasn't in support. Oh, Bahaki Kaizon. Oh, tries to be too fancy. Shah Hero sweeps it out towards Ashwin Sharif, but Sharif Sama rises. Chuli. Still Chuli. Good challenge, Shah Hero. That's what he was brought into the team to do. <laughs> Terrific pace and fizz about Tampanese. Ridwan, far post is not Alan Shaw. Bahaki Kai's on this time with the interception. Well, by Haki Kaizen was his interception was timely before Niridwan managed to get a cross in because in there no Alamsha was still lurking and Chu Li was just finding his way into the box. Anything into the center of the Geelong boss would have actually ended up in trouble for the Eagles. Sutty will swing this one on, left footed. Mustafik is on that near post. Three green shirts in close attendance to him because they know he's good in the air. Sharif Samat is up there. Chu Lee's in the danger zone. So is Kaneko. They go short. Oh, what a, what a goal, Chu Lee! A terrific goal, a step over from Nakamura. The strike from Chu Lee. And that is all the Tampanis deserve. It's a quality goal. And Tampanis lead the... East Coast Derby by a goal to nil. Now that was a really, a really well worked set piece. Something which you do at the training ground and you really just practice and practice and it was just really just executed by this Chuli. First Suti was a fantastic, well worked piece and Nakamura to step over set every one of the Gaelan players in the wrong foot and Yazid Yasin was just rooted to his spot. As we look at it once more, Fantastic work by Tampines Rowers, and what a brilliant goal. You summed it up, what a brilliant goal. An early contender for goal of the season. Ahaki. Belichak. Strong in good footwork, but then loses out to Noah Alam Shah. Chuli. It's all about confidence, and Chuli's goal will give him loads. Sutty. Ridwan. Nakamura. 
his dummy so crucial in the goal. I wonder how often they have tried that on the training ground. Well, I'm sure it was, has been, a, I'm sure they've tried that a couple of times. It was executed to perfection. But we have been saying that Tampines have been knocking on the doors and it was just a matter of time before so the goals come in. Well, they've had a better chances and they do deserve the lead. Bahaki. And no rally. His promising start has faded out a little bit. Ashwin Sharif. Gaylang will be looking for those two to try and spark something. And to Latiak. Here's Belichak. Faisal Senin. I wonder what the three wise men of Gaylang can do to turn this one round. Oh, and it's not a bad effort. Just over the top from Ashwin Sharif. I think Ashwin Sharif knew exactly what he was doing as he stepped across Zulkanantana and he knew that he, knew he just needed to lob the ball over as he just managed to skip past Zulkanain. It's a good kick and we know unfortunately it just did not group in time. Ashwin scored three times already this season, so he's not short on confidence. goes in ahead of Ashwin and then Kaneko joins the attack and for a moment it looked that might have looped over Yazid but he's not the tallest but he's got very very quick feet gets into position quickly does the goalkeeper well Yazid Yasin was the young player of the year 999 when he was at home United they won the championship that year the very only championship home United has won since and well he was brilliant in that season and after that I think he went down to went back to his old club Sambaong Rangers and to Woodlands after that. He's one of the players who's actually been one of the consistency in the league, one of the better goalkeepers. No Alan Shah has left Faisal Senin in an absolute heap in the middle of the pitch as Alif looks aghast as a ball that just went away from him. Faisal Senin feeling the rough end of a no Alam Shah challenge there. Friday night fair at Jalambasar. Well, not an awful lot Noor Alam Shah could do about that. He was trying to get out the way. I think Noor Alam Shah really tried to avoid um, Shahirul's um, tackles coming through and um, he did really, really well. Faisal Sunin, I think, just probably had a bad bounce as he, as he landed on the ground and, well, Really, I don't think Alam Shah did anything wrong. We're watching Great Eastern News, S League Football, one of the top ten leagues in Asia. AFC Champions League participation and AFC Cup participation is the cherry for the top two. And Tampanese Rovers want to be in the top two at the end of the year, having missed out narrowly in the last two seasons. I think he'd like another tilt at European, European, at international football. Mr. Fikvarudin, truly the goal scorer, and what a good goal it was too. Not Alam Shah with too much space for Gaylang's enjoyment, as Mr. Fik acknowledges that it's a handball by him. Seto finds Bahaki Kaizom. Ricky Harris. Well, he had a touch as Ricky Harris. One of the things I, I like to ask the experts is their opinion on the foreigners because the foreigners who come in and play are so important. Well, Ricky Harris actually has um, got one attribute which I can really see. It's his speed, but he's not really used anything else. He's not really been fantastic over the last 40 minutes or so but you do tell that he can, does have potential to show off 
especially they use him and use his speed to their advantage. The Japanese players in Tampines Row is Kaneko, Akihiro Nakamura and uh, Hiroki actually have been, they've been a great team together and you do know why the Japanese players here have been doing pretty well in the last couple of seasons. I think that's all thanks to Albrecht Nigata who've come in and, you know, shown off what skills and speed they do and they do help us with our game. Truly. Shah Hero gets the important header. Suti. Mustafik is trying to put Nakamura free down the left-hand side. Latiak on to Belichak. Now he's got his players running ahead of him. Ashrin Sharif. And there's green shirts in the penalty area. Ashrin's cross, though, is way too deep for Ricky Harris. And it was a rare moment for Gaylang United to push forward. And Ashrin's cross was frustratingly poor. Well, it was a poor cross there by the former Singapore international Ashrin Sharif. They should have done better. It was the one chance they had to try to find something before the breather. We understand there'll be two minutes of time added on as loose play releases Ricky Harris. And Harris, Belichak, no rally. Harris makes the run. No rally, who scored a terrific goal against Alborex on the first day of the season. But he's lost possession, and Noor Alam Shah then gives the ball away poorly to Kamarul Arifin. Latiak sweeps it off. Important jump and header from Sutti. And at the other end, it's Alif Shafayin. No Alam Shah. Mustafik. Plays it simple. Chuli, Mustafik, Kaneko available. The cross. Kamrul Afin gets there and Ridwan chases second ball. Breaks kindly for Yazid. And Gaylang are really, really surviving by their fingernails. The thing about Tampines Rovers is that they really look very, very dangerous when they get into the box. And Gaylang a little bit slow when it comes to defending in numbers. And, well, Tampines Rovers, as long as they try to get into the box, they have their players to put the ball away. 1-0 could easily be 3 or 4. Well, they've had a better chance in this game, and I think Yazid Yazin has... He's really lucky he's only picked up the ball from his net just once. Suti. Into no Alam Shah. Strong enough to hold off Bahaki. Suti. Fizzles that one across and out for a goal kick. Harris there and no Alam Shah that was Rafi Ali who's now on the coaching team at Tampanese Alif Tampanese coming forward with Sutty no Alam Shah near post Good safe handling from Yazid Yassin. And Tampanese on the attack is an appropriate way to end the half. I think they do deserve the lead going into this, the breather, the first 45 minutes. They've had a lion's share of the game and they've had the better chances. Oh, the flag is up. It's a late flag. It's a correct flag, though. Eugene Chan. And that is the last action. And it's only a goal to nil that there's the difference between the teams as we just have a look at the offside there against Alif. But this has been an excellent performance, particularly in the last half hour by Tampanese. And 1 nil could easily be 3. Well, they've had the better chances of the game and Tampanese rowers, well, they walk into the dressing room knowing that, you know, they probably have a great strength on this game and Lim Tong Hai would have to get in there and figure out how he's going to try to drag his team back into this match. We'll be back with the highlights in just a couple of minutes. The three wise men of Geylang, though, have an awful lot to think about because it's half-time at Jalan Basar in the Great Eastern Yos S League.
It's Geylang United nil, Tampanese Rovers are deserved one. Welcome back to Jalan Basar, second half of Geylang versus Tampanese Rovers in the Great Eastern Yo's S League. About to get underway, 1-0 to the blue shirt at Tampanese at half-time. A goal from Chuli, scored on 35 minutes, and it's a deserved lead that they carry into the second half. And we're looking early on to see if there's any changes in tactics by Tampanese. They went with a, a back three at the start of this game. And Jose Raymond, who's in the commentary box, will be keeping a, a close look eye to see if they change that tactic at the start of the second half. Mustafa Faroudin. Ridwan. The obvious question, Jose, would you change it? No, I think Tampines Rose just needs to continue playing the way they have because they've been giving Gaylan all kinds of problems with, the three, with this 3 4 3 formation. And Chuli, Noel Amshah, Alif Shafain just playing behind them have been great and they've been causing Geelong all kinds of problems. So why change the winning formula? Latiak finds Ashwin Sharif. Norali. Still fit as a fiddle, Norali. Belichak loses out to Mustafik and that was a heavyweight battle in the centre midfield. Vatislav Belichak. No, Alam Shah. Terrific pace from Alam Shah. No support. It was too quick for his own good. Ridwan. And Bahaki Kaizon clears it. And Bahaki, the pinup boy of Singapore football, he and his defence have been under a lot of trouble. Well, that's another corner here. And the first goal for Tampanese was came through a corner. Well, it's interesting to see what they come up with this time around. Especially after that brilliant corner in the first half, which ended in the goal. Well, all eyes will be on Tampanese Rovers this time around. Chu Lee, who's on the edge of the penalty area in the yellow boots. It was from about there that he scored in the first half. It looks a little bit more orthodox on this occasion, and Norali noticeably cutting off the path where the ball went in that first half. Sutti! Oh, and it's somehow blocked twice by Yazid. Third effort, Yazid, no Alan Shaw! On. I cannot believe that that ball has not gone into the back of the net. Well, how many was it? Six times, six chances at goal in that last 30 seconds. And Yazid has taken it in the face. He saved it with his arms. He saved it with his legs. No, Alam Shaw was denied. It all started from that. That's a block on the line. Alif is denied by the feet of Yazid. Comes back again. No offside by the hands. And then by the face, and then cleared. Well, once again, they found a way to try to get around this beautiful set piece. And a variation worked to extreme. It was fantastic the way they worked around. The, and chance after chance after chance, they took shots at goal. Unfortunately, just denied by the defender, by Yazid Yassin. And Tampanese was really, really unlucky not to be able to double the lead here. And the end result is they've got another corner. And Yazid is now up and fit. And that is truly a remarkable sequence of events. And Sutti. Yazid comes and gets a fist on this one. Alif finds Chuli. And Yazid must come again. That's a good punch. He's only little, but he got his arm through a posse of players, and no rally can break with Sharif and Latiak ahead of him. And Latiak, it's just too far ahead of Latiak and Hassan Sunny. Terrific distribution to Chuli. Well, the first half started not quite as exciting as this, but it's an excellent game of football. Ricky Harris. Oh, that's a great, great challenge by Zulkarnam. He's hurt. The ball will go out of play. 
but that was a you shall not pass kind of challenge. Well, I think uh, Zuka and I took a bit of a beating there through Ricky Harris's knee as he went there. And well, Zul would probably come up and get the better of this, and he should be all right, but it does look like it was a little painful. And great start to the second half by both teams. Tampanese Rovers in action on Friday night tonight and next week when they take on Super Reds. Super Reds, of course, the team who surprised everybody by their performances last year, coming third in the title chase. They haven't quite started as well this year. But Tampanese versus Super Reds will be another game of football here on Channel 5 and, of course, the 9 o'clock re-airing on Saturday morning. Alif loses out. Ricky Harris. Harris, lovely pass. Oh, it's a metre too far ahead of Ashwin Sharif. Harris. Belichak's available on the right. Not impressed that he didn't get the pass. Faisal. No, Ali! Puts it wide and he knows, he knows that was a chance. I think there's a chance Noali should have actually put it away, at least tested the goalkeeper Hassan Sunny on his own. Well, he's just could not get it on target. Well, they say a one-goal lead is vulnerable. Of course it is. And Tampanese will be looking for that second, that incredible sequence of events a couple of minutes ago, notwithstanding. They need that second goal. Latiak and Belichak. No, Ali has got through. He can square it to Harris. He goes near post. And Hassan accepts the gift. And No, Ali twice in 60 seconds has squandered great moments. I think that was a poor decision there by No, Ali. I think he went for glory instead when Luke Harris was available. Shahiro, no flag, Harris, he's got Ashwin Sharif inside, Harris goes to ground and the free kick is given against Ricky Harris and a yellow card for simulation. Well, let's see whether Ricky Harris deserves a yellow card for diving or did he? Well, I think there was a slight contact outside the box and maybe he's been hard done by by the referee's decision and if you ask me, there was a little bit of contact. We have seen it be given before. Maybe he just went a little bit too early, or a little bit too easily. For the and Kaneko was a really, really lucky man. Kaneko, very fortunate. Mohamed Taki has decided that this is simulation. And he's pretty adamant about it, to be fair, with the referee. There's no doubt in his mind. Sooty. No, Alam Shah. What an excellent game of football. All kinds of things happening here in the second half as well. And I think Geelang United have come into this game in the second half knowing that they need to find one, a goal back and they've tried and are trying. Unfortunately, two bad decisions by Noali and, well, they still find themselves trailing 1-0. Shah Hero goes all the way back to Yazid Yassin. Harris nearly keeps it in play. Four-year-old, the striker from Canada, Ricky Harris. Yet to score this season. Mr. Fikfarudin. Red one. Julie, score of the only goal, finds Alif. Bahaki steps in and there's a free kick. No, Alan Shah just going in a little bit rough on Camero. He's put himself in the line of fire on a couple of occasions, has 
Kamal Arif. Are you a fan of this three at the back? Well, it's the game. It's, it's three at the back. Actually, gives it a very attacking flair to the match. And um, well, a little bit more stable. A little bit more stability would be having four. But if you ask me, I prefer the game to be an attacking kind of game instead of one which has got four and a very defensive one. The creative spirit of your co-commentator Jose Raymond, who. You may or may not know, wrote the theme song for the Asian Youth Games. So if you like it, Jose Raymond's the man to thank. As Latiak surges forward. Latiak, Ricky Harris, oh, the flag is up. And what a surge from Miroslav Latiak. And it's a controversial decision. No, Ali is adamant it's not offside. I don't think this is the best angle to see it. looks a bit tight and I can't really tell from this angle whether Ricky Harris was offside when that decision was taken and but it was a surging run and Gaylang unfortunately had the numbers up there and it only was only Kaneko who was back well unfortunately the decision went against them Tampanese the results this season nil-nil against home United a two-all draw against Woodlands, which had shades of this game in the Tampanies. Well, obviously the better side, but Woodlands wanted it more. And that finished two each. One-all against Balestia. A 2-0 victory against Senkang. And now they lead 1-0 here against Geylang. Kaneko. In terms of league position, victory for Tampanese have put them onto nine points, which is still four adrift of Gombak United, who have 13 after five games. And that is really the story of the season so far. Gombak United, but there's a long way to go. Farood in four Tampanese Rovers. Ali Shafain. Sutty. Chu Lee and Noor Alam Shah, the targets. They might go all the way through to Ridwan. A good touch from Ridwan. One on one against Faisal Senim, and he'll fancy that one, Ridwan. And the free kick goes to the Tampanese Rovers man. And we've got a change as Benoit Crossop is coming on. And Alex Shafayin is the man who's stepping off. Interesting. Well, we did see this um, coming on towards the end of the first half where we just looked at what Tampanese had available on the bench. And it's very likely that we're going to bring on Benoit Crossop to try and. Uh, probably get a little bit stupidly at the back and well Benoit former Al Najmer player and ex Sheffield United makes his way into the Gila penalty box as they assemble to prepare for this kick well Sutti's over the ball Tampanese hearts are soaring they're leading by a goal to nil approaching the hour croissants in the penalty area so is Kaneko and Mustafik and No Alam Shah. And Sutti. Great block by Harris. And Harris clears his lines. Ridwan. And there's a man over. No Alam Shah. No, oh, he had more time than he realized. Frustration etched all over his face. Latiak, Harris, Nor Ali, Latiak ahead of him, as is Harris, Nor Ali is blocked off by Crossop and cleared away by Nakamura. Harris, free kick, Kaneko tumbles into Ricky Harris, 
and this is no rally to alley territory. Although Ashwin Sharif is trotting over as though he has a little fancy for this one. Well, I think Ashwin Sharif has actually scored goals from this angle and this from this distance when he used to play for SFFC. He's got a really good right foot. And you do see Noah Ali, Ricky Harris. They're all over the ball, but I think Ashwin has stepped away from it. And it could be Ricky Harris who tries to get a go at this. Harris is certainly stepping up. And Latiak's there, who's left-footed. Ashwin Sharif has been pushed away. Nur Ali is miles away from the action. So it's Harris. Five blue shirts in the wall. What kind of a view has Hassan got of the ball? Harris. Oh, it's into the ball. That's really, really poor. And Lim Tong Hai, distinctly unimpressed. Well, there was a good chance to at least test the goalkeeper, but the free kick was just poorly executed. Shah Hero, Belichak. Oh, and Norali has broken the offside trap. Norali, three times he's been through on Hassan Sunny. Three times Norali has burned the opportunity. That was a good break there by Geelong United and managed to spring the offside trap. Good pass and well, Norali using his speed just got off Zuckan and Zainal and well, he had, he knew he needed to either take a pot shot or try to get the better of um, Shariville unfortunately just went way wide. Free kick goes against Chuli. Tampanese have changed the way their their setup is. They've gone to 4-4-2 and Harris is trying to get the wrong side of Sharif Samat. Good strike from Faisal Senim. But the change of formation has resulted in a change in the swing of this game. Well, I'm not sh really sure Coach Warawan may have gotten that right by changing the formation of the back of the defence a little bit too early in this game. That's caused a little bit of confusion, like you said, at the back. And, um, well, I've always been told and believed that the best form of defence is to attack. And, well, I'm not sure if this forward back is going to actually affect or assist Tampini as they try to secure the three points in this match. 13-6, to six, the shots on goal. As the artisan comes out in Jose Raymond once again. If we get um, a lengthy break in play, I might ask you to sing the song, Jose. I didn't come with my guitar. Shah Hero, two little dummies on Sutton. Throw in to Geylang, who just over the hour. Somehow only trailed by a goal to nil, but are very definitely back in the game. And no rally has had three three chances. Well, I'm sure he's got a little bit of a responsibility in his shoulders wearing that captain's armband, and I'm sure he'll probably think that he should have at least gotten Geelang goal to the good. Oh, what a touch by Sutty. Couldn't keep it in play, and Harris. Loses out to Nakamura and then follows through. Nakamura not at all impressed with Ricky Harris. Faisal Senin. Plenty of green shirts ahead of him. Belichak. Zulkanen does well. Sutti does well. Seto puts Bahaki into all kinds of danger. But Shah Hero. Harris. Latiak. Harris again. He's growing into this game. Got a lucky break. Ashwin Sharif. That was a no-holds-barred challenge between Sharif and Kaneko. Oh, 
Star Hero. That's a wasted pass. Came on as a first half substitution for Yasir Hanapi. Started at the centre of midfield, has now dropped onto the right wing back position. Barawan looks a bit more relaxed now. City finds Zulkani. Sutty again. Mustafik. Uses the full width of the pitch, invites Kaneko to come on. Kaneko, who's moved to right back, has got Chu Li in the penalty area. It just drifts over the Chinese born Singapore international. Important stage of the game, Jose. Well, I think it's a really important stage of the game right now, and um, Geelong United will know that this is probably the best time they need to try to push forward to get a goal. And Tampines Rovers with Ben Ocrosan trying to stabilize the defense and secure the three points. A goal now for either side could change things drastically. Latiak. Can I go? Truly. Loses out to Belichak. No rally. Harris. Bahaki Kaizon. No rally is the target. Sharif Samat. It was either very composed or very dangerous. Well, I suppose he must have known that if he had missed that, goalkeeper Hassan Sani would have saved him. And, well, did no harm to the Templars' defence and Geelang United still have 25 minutes or so to try to find something to get back into this game. Hassan's punt is picked up by Amaral Lufin. And cross on, tidies up alongside Sharif Samat. That's a dangerous throw out by Hassan. There's all kinds of mixed messages coming from the, what is an hour back four of Tampanese. Sometimes composed, sometimes a little bit stressed. Alam Shah's touch is short. The pass is picked up by Bahaki Kaizom. Zulkana, under pressure from Harris. Goes down the line to Sutti. Sutti's got round Bahaki. Sutti goes in. That's 2 0 now, Alam Shah. And made by the tie, Sutti. Dispatched in the six yard box by No Alam Shah. Well, we knew that there was a goal which is coming and, you know, the team was going to get it was probably going to secure three points and great work there by Super 6 Trump kid who managed to just wait and wait and wait and pick out his ace striker, No Alam Shah, who made no mistake from, what, five metres outside of Yasin's Yassin, goal. You can see how relieved they are, Tampines Rovers, to found finally the second goal to secure and ease the nerves a bit. The fans are smiling. The coach seems a bit more secure. He's talking a bit more now. Coach Warren probably would go back to the seat. Really happy, and this is where it all happened. Suti so Sipsom did manage to get the better of Bayaki guys and waited, waited, and waited. And no, I'm sure he's not gonna miss from just six yards out. And well, great goal there for Tampanese Rovers and 2 0 up. Second goal of the season for No Alam Shah. And they say that's the office for good strikers, the six yard box. And he's done his day's work. And a little shoe shine to boot as well. Okay, you're Gay Lang, what do you do? 
Well, there's no other way now except to push bodies forward and try to find a goal and probably just hopefully push it all the way. You can't just sit back and defend now, knowing that you're already two deep down. Chu Li, though, has found space on the left-hand side, and Sutti's gone outside of him. Sutti! Oh, that's a terrific effort. And it was six inches away from number three. Great work there by Champion Shows to cut open the Geelong defence. Well, Sutti comes just inches wide of Yasin Yasin's right post, and, uh, well, truly great work to find Sutti, and Sutti really, really unlucky here. Yes, yes, and completely beaten. Well, he probably think they know he had it covered, but what great work there by the Thai International. Four or five years ago, Tampanese put seven past Geylang. I'm not saying that this has got the same kind of game to it, but Tampanese are looking dangerous every time they go forward. And as Geylang throw bodies forward to try and get something, They'll be exposed. Cross on is caught late. Truly is caught late and calls for the yellow card. He provokes mixed emotions, does Truly, doesn't he? Well, sometimes he might seem a bit belligerent, sometimes a bit too noisy on the pitch, speaks too much, talks back to referees, gets into a red carded, yellow carded for unnecessary reasons, but he is a talent. You're a fan. I'm a great fan of Chuli. I think he's got a great touch, a great shot, and he knows what he's doing. Skillful footballer. Chuli scored an excellent goal in the first half. Ricky Harris will receive a yellow card. He's already received one yellow card, and Mohamed Taki, I think, has bought himself some time. And that's well done, Mr. Referee. His hand was going towards his pocket. The yellow card was coming out. He realised who it was. Well, I think Ricky Harris would probably be... can count himself lucky that he's still on the pitch. And then one more tackle and he's out. Tampanese in the blue, leading this great Eastern Yo's S League match. The Eastern Derby against Geylang by two goals to nil. And Geylang haven't beaten Tampanese, oh, it seems like forever. Mustafik. How important those chances for Noor Ali become now. Looking back, I think things would have been really different now if just one of those would have gone in and I think we have seen a really, really different result at the end of this match. Sharif Samat. Sutti has got the wrong side of Shah Hirol. Sutti on the four post Ridwan. Well, if they'd taken their chances, this would have been six or seven. Well, Tampa's Rovers. <laughs> had so many chances in this game to kill off Geelong United and probably make them embarrassed but well if only they'd been a little bit more sharper Shah Hero who himself came on as a sub is now coming off that can't do much for the kids confidence G. Lennon who's a more natural fullback he's coming on and Ricky Harris is also coming off as Farhan Farouk comes on. And I think that's to save Mr. Harris from a red card. So all the changes Gaylan can make have been made. Not Alam Shah into Sutti. Sutti. Mustafik. Alam Shah. Sutti. Nakamura. Information Farhan Farouk is on for Harris. Farhan's got a ton of pace. Lenham overlapping. Nor Ali. Belichak's there and Ashwin Sharif flag is up. 
a little bit too fast on his feet, Ashin Sharif. And, well, I think the idea was there to try to cut open the static Tampines defense. Um, Noali had the idea, but Ashin Sharif just a little bit too fast. Good view of the main stand at Jalan Basar. It is a very handsome building. Coming from the west, I'd love to see some terraces behind the goals, but there's no space. Well, this Jalan Basar Stadium is going to be the venue for the football competition for the Asian Youth Games coming up in June to July. 15 minutes to go. Geylang United have a huge, huge mountain to climb. It may be only 2-0, which is a dangerous lead. And Seto becomes the latest into referee Taki's notebook. where Faisal Senin can clear. And that second goal has really knocked the stuffing out of Geylang. Well, interestingly, he's back to three at the back for Tampines Rovers with Mustafik just being the peg in front of them. Croissant. Trusting his goalkeeper. Hassan Seni. He goes long and Bahaki Kaizon plays the ball into space for Faisal Seni. Latiak. Farhan Farouk pushed out of it by Kaneko. He wanted the free kick. Doesn't come his way. Zulkanem. No, Alan Shah, a little push on the back of Seto. He certainly puts himself about. Traditional English style centre forward with his admirers. Bahaki. Belichak. Ashwin. Closed down quickly by Ben Rockcrossant. Me ref, he says. Yes, you ref. Varouan looks an awful lot happier now. His side have really turned on the style for the Friday night cameras. And they're here at this same venue next week when they take on the Super Reds. Full reports on sleague.com. Ashwin Sharif. Oh. Can he go as clumsy rather than intentional with that free kick? Ashwin Sharif, though, not liking what went on. And Kaneko, this is this is good refereeing. You know, I think Kaneko just was really, really clumsy and was trying to get the ball in. And Rashin Shari probably just was responsible for getting himself hit and hit by trying to. Well, he just took a little bit of a bow. Well, Balicek will take this free kick. It's a good ball in. There was a hand there. It's a corner kick to Gay Lang. But that was a lovely ball in by Balacek into territory just beyond where Hassan Sony can come and clear. And just in front of his forwards. Norali. Eight green shirts in and around the penalty area. They've thrown everybody forward. Strong header from Zulkanem. Norali. Belichek. 
closed down by Mr. Fikfarudin. G. Lennon. Arif. And Sutti. Oh, the flag is up for offside. Need to get you thinking about the RHB Bank man of the match in a few moments, Jose. And who would your main contenders be? Well, I think a couple of players actually have stood out in this game. Mustafa Farouddin has been, as usual himself, strong, defending his uh, back four, back three at, at points, and still providing the support to his forwards. Nakamura might get a second chance and has won a free kick as he's been pulled down by Bahaki Kaizom. And Bahaki sees yellow, and there's a chance for a third because there's a free kick to Tampanis Rovers, 20 yards from goal. Now, I remember last season uh, when the score was 2-2 between Geelong and uh, Tampanis Rovers right here. Suri Sub Tomkit came up with a brilliant free kick, which got them the winner. Well, you see Chu Lee, Suti, Mustafik, Akahiro, they're all behind the ball. Well, your guess is as good as mine, who's going to take this? Three yellow cards now shown to Geylang players, Sutti and Chu Lee, both lining this. We've seen Chu Lee, their Sutti score from this range in internationals. And Mustafix there, Chu Lee! Valencia power, in fact, so powerful, it's ripped through the netting behind the goal. Well, if that was a little bit more accurate, it would have been really, or impossible, in fact, for Yasin Yassi to stop. Just was a little bit too powerful and a bit too high. That ball is flying. Absolutely flying. Seto. Haruki Seto, who came from Balestia. So he knows what the S League is all about. Farhan Farouk. Hassan had that one covered all the way. Well, this has been an excellent performance from Tampanese Rovers. The Stags, I think, are back. Well, after three draws, it looks like as though they're going to have two victories in a row. And Tampanese Rovers are going to go back to where they rightfully belong near the top of the table. No rally. Zoltanen helps it to safety. Latiak. Belichak. And the movement in front of him has stopped a little bit. Although G. Lennon's found some space. And Kaneko. Confident defending by the Japanese. Ridwan. Well, Alan Shah is wins the free kick from Seto. on a little bit glumly as truly with three blue shirts in the penalty area truly truly good save once again it breaks no Alan Shaw is offside he disagrees truly's shot was saved by Yazid but while we focus on the assistant referee Gay Lang are trying to benefit from a bit of space and G. Lennon has got green shirts to aim for. Hassan Sunny gets there. In fact, Ashrin Sharif got there ahead of Hassan and Ashrif 
Ashwin might be in trouble for the scent. Well, which bit of action do we want to get the replay of? At the other end, there was the Noor Alam Shah disallowed goal. And I think that's what we'll see first. So, Jose, your verdict? Well, I think, firstly, Chuli's shot actually came in, and it was a save there by Yassin Yassin. Well, it was the last touch came off a Geelong player, so was Alam Shah offside then? Would he be considered being in an offside position? If, especially when the last he came off, Kabrul Arifin. Great one. Clearance from Kamro Laffin. Strong. Perfectly legal challenge from Seto. Cross on. You can only find Farhan Farouk. And Sharif Samat's recovered well. Well, the highlights show from this would be seven or eight minutes long I suspect there's been all kinds going on and truly wants to add another to the highlight reel oh what a tackle from Faisal Senim corner kick it is but Ridwan was coming in on the far post and Faisal just had to get there well great work and great defensive work there by Faisal it was very difficult to defend such a cross and Yazid Yassin fully committed any kind of touch there by Ridwan would have actually found his way to the back of the net. Ridwan himself got himself injured through that tackle from Faisal and well great to see the teamwork there by, by Haki Kaizan trying to get his national team right up. But Gelang United in trying to push numbers forward are getting really exposed at the back. On Sutty. Another corner coming in. Nakamura, quietly effective, rarely gives the ball away. Sutty, Ridwan, Sutty. No, Alam Shah's far post, wins the header. Off the line from Mustafik. If you haven't caught the whole of this game, it is worth watching at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning because Tampanese have really shown that they are back. Ashwin Sharif cleared by the Frenchman, Croissant. This is the Noor Alam Shah leap at the far post, gets above the keeper. Perfect positioning. And as we watch that replay, Edward Tan will be coming on for Tampanese for a match bonus. And Ridwan, who was injured when trying to divert that chance at the far post in, he's the man who'll come off. But well, it's just a couple of minutes more to go towards the to the end of this match and it does look like you said that Tampines Rovers are back and they've played some great football tonight even though at points in the first half you wonder whether they're going to succumb to this early Geelong onslaught but they've played some good football some neat touches some good one touch passes good teamwork and 2-0 up Tan finds Mustafik Faroudin. Nakamura. Shuli. Surely a contender for man of the match. Mustafik Faroudin. No Alam Shah. Chuli, Chuli, spectacular save by Yazid. 
who has been a very, very busy goalkeeper. Good trickery there by Chu Li. He, Nolam Shah almost tried to drag all the Geelong defenders away from him, and Chu Li, seeing a little bit of an opening, decided to have a crack at goal. And great work there by Yazid Yassin to grab that off. Yeah. Bahaki. Edward Tan to Bahaki. Belichak on to Latiak. No Alam Shah. Three minutes of time to be added on. Latiak. And Hassan picks up the wayward pass by Bahaki Kaizom. And I can't think of a difficult save that the Singapore international keepers had to make. Well, I think he's been kept really, really safe at the back, secure through the defenders. And unfortunately, the chances which Geelong had their way either found themselves wayward or were just not accurate enough to trouble him. He's had a really quiet afternoon, evening it is. Sutty. You'll be in the running for the RHB Man of the Match award. You, you're not going to tell me, are you? The glum looking faces of the Geylang fans. Local bragging rights again are going Tampani's way. In terms of the table, Tampanis will remain in fourth place on nine points. Gone back lead on 13. The armed forces with 12 points from four games. DPMM from Brunei, 11 from five. And this will be Tampanis and Chuli looking to make it a spectacular finish. Still Chuli, Nakamura. What an astute signing Nakamura could turn out to be. Sutti, Chuli, Mustafik Faroudin. Farhan Farouk, nowhere really to go. And that's easy for Zulkanen. So Vorowan must be much happier than he looked before the game. He did look nervous and out of sorts as Imran Sahib gets his chance to come on for Chuli. Well, I think the pressure should be off uh, Coach Waro and Chitavanich and uh, knowing that his team are still unbeaten in the league and they've had two victories on the throat and I think Tampa Show was if they continue to play like this, they should be all right towards the end of the season, trying to fight for the championship. And you do see a smile on his face as he gives Chuli a pat on the back. Joe Hoxang and is going home the happier chairman. More problems for Patrick Hang and Geylang United. The Battle of the East has been won and comprehensively won by the blue shirts and the yellow clad supporters of Tampanis Rovers. 2-0 it was, but Jose Raymond, it could have been so much more. I think Tampanis Rovers had the Eagles, Lions share out this game, sorry. And uh, yes, like I said, as it could have been, what, 5-0? They had so many chances and Yazid Yassin kept the ball out and Noah Lamisha had a couple of chances as well, which went wayward, but could have been so easily three points in the bag with a huge margin of victory.